In 1692, colonists from New Spain came to this land called Remote Beyond Compare. In the 1700s, others followed and built small towns or plazas along the middle Rio Grande Valley. The main plaza was the Via de Albuquerque. To the north was La Plaza del Señor San José de los Duranes, a farming community founded by the Duran family in the mid-1700s. My father, José Remigio Duran, he built a house, my, my grandmother's. And we lived here since then, all our life. The area evolved into a rich ethnic mix. Today, Los Duranes remains an active, vital community. This peaceful neighborhood is in startling contrast to the fast-paced life around it. Los Duranes preserves its 18th century roots while surrounded by a 21st century city. One time we're out there, you know, we're sitting in the ditch, we cut a watermelon and broke it there and then we were here eating watermelon. So here, here comes this man in a bicycle. And he says, I remember, remember that so clearly. He says, oh, I was just passing by and I saw you eating that watermelon. I just stopped by to eat, you know, to get a piece. And my mom says, you pass by every day. Why don't you stop by when we're hoeing also? I eat green chili every day. And uh, <laughs> I was making some green chili. And uh, they said, they, my, my, my daughter says, no wonder you're so healthy, you, you eat chili every day. And uh, I, can, I, I, I think I won't live without chili, <laughs> green chili or red. Los Duranes was on the Camino Real. This old house may have been a paraje, or rest stop. Some of the houses in Los Duranes are very old. There are families here whose ancestors started with the community and gave the streets their name. People are born, they live and die in the same home, on the same land. This is uh, my mother's homeland. She, her father, her great, or her grandfather was uh, uh, Rafael Gabaldon, and he's the one that settled this uh, valley. And the street, out, the road out here is named for him. We had several acres under cultivation, and mainly uh, alfalfa fields, and I used to help with the irrigation. Life in early Los Duranes depended on the valley land and the river's water. Crops were irrigated, literally covered with water by a system of ditches called acequias. The Los Duranes Acequia Madre, the mother ditch still in use, dates back to the beginning of the 18th century. A mayordomo, or ditch boss, was elected by the community to allocate the water, which was contained and released by a system of compuertas, of gates, and to coordinate the annual cleaning and maintenance of the acequias. Every year, the acequia, they would come. They, everybody had to go, all the farmers, they would clean all the, the acequia, the arroyo, what you call it, all the way. You know, all the farmers, they would get together. But they would upon you, they had to go, you know. You get all the neighbors together on, on, on a, one day, or two days work, a big the dish with a bigger shower. Floods devastated homes, which were rebuilt again and again. We used to, we used to hear the, the water roaring at night. We'd hear the waves. It was kind of, kind of like the ocean, you might say. It was very quiet at night, and you could just hear that water rolling down the Rio Grande. Bad drainage created marshes, and fields became waterlogged and unusable. After 
a few years, the conservancy came in and took over, and we didn't have to dig the ditches anymore. In the 1930s and 1940s, the middle Rio Grande Conservancy District drained the swamps. They redesigned the ditch system and they reclaimed the land. In 1880, the railroad built its terminal and shops, and a new Albuquerque appeared about two miles east of old Albuquerque. With it came factories, foundries, sawmills, service industries, and jobs. It was a sawmill. They worked there, and they had a doctor for the family, so that was one good thing, you know. They had a doctor for the family. If we, had a, we got pregnant, had a baby, the, the doctor would come and be $20 for if it was a girl, 21 if it was a boy. We had to hoe every morning. Like in the summertime, get up really early in the morning. I don't go hoe out there till 10 o'clock, come back and rest and go back up at 4 o'clock till it was dark. And we used to carry the, for the produce that we grew and our shoulders right here, carry it down to the house. It was hard to maintain a family on a small farm, so many people from Los Duranes worked outside the community. They tended their land, they tended animals and homes. Before and after 10 or 12 hour work days, six days a week. My daddy used to wake up at four o'clock in the morning, go feed the horses and stuff like that, and get ready to, to go to work. Then come in the evening, uh, work on the fields, irrigation, you know, with the whole cutting weeds. It was just busy all the time. When I was single, I used to work everywhere. Laundry, like Celsius laundry, sanitary laundry. I used to work at the Alvarado Hotel, and I used to work at Kremlin and the Hilton Hotel clean rooms, <laughs> all that. I used to work a lot when I was single. My mother used to wash clothes and iron for 75 cents a day. You know, oh, that was a lot of work. And children, too, had their share of chores to do. I was about 11 years old. My grandfather would put the raise right behind me, and I'd get behind that plow and cry all day long. And, but kept on going all day long till he, the chores got done. I loved helping my dad in the truck. I would help him with the bales of hay and then stack him up in the garage. And then uh, we called it La Cochera, the garage. And of course, the chickens were always loose, so they would lay their eggs all over the bales of hay. So we had to go down looking, searching for eggs. I just started playing hooky all the time, and then my father found out about it and took me out of school and put me to work at the farm for 50 cents a day, five cents an hour. Homes were often hand-built, one room at a time of adobes. We moved into this house when I got married. It was in 47. The floors were dirt. The vigas were... Uh, th every time a car passed, the dirt will <laughs> fall down, you know. When children married, the land was redivided so each strip had access to water. Then another room with an outside door was added to the house. What I did is uh, after I built each couple of rooms from my, I uh, added on to my mother's house, I met my wife and we got married. We got to live there in one of the rooms there for a couple of years. The extended family was good for children who had a grandparent or a an aunt to take care of them while parents worked. The environment for children, as I remember, was just very peaceful, very calm, very loving. They always knew they had someone that they could go to, even if a lot of times they didn't have mothers or fathers had died. Neighbors were always available or relatives. And uh, that was my, I guess, favorite memory of always being so comfortable and so loved and taken care of. I started uh, in the third grade at San Felipe Catholic School. The school was uh, converted uh, from the old courthouse. And it has been 
since been destroyed and a new one built. Formal education was almost unknown until the late 1800s when schools began to appear and children were doomed to attend. The old school, they only had, I think about eight rooms and no, no gas. We had some wood stoves, you know, those four orders, big ones like that, and we had a little check on the back. And the Han Kalt Company from Albuquerque, from the city of Albuquerque, used to bring them some wood and coal, and I used to bring them to the rooms, you know, and put them to the stove so we could get warm. And we had electricity, I remember we had electricity, but no, no gas. I went to the old Catholic school there in Old Town where the sisters are now. School was sometimes fun, but it could be hard, especially for children who had to learn a second language, English. My parents used to talk Spanish, and we learned Spanish from them, you know. And then when we went to school, we, they, we learned English in school. And then, uh, it was very hard because, you know, we didn't know. We didn't know. We were very dumb in the first place. <laughs> and now, like it is nowadays, the kids, you know, they're smart. They are smart. And he used to tell us all the time, I want you guys to go to school. I don't want you to be uh, dumb like me, you know, a sheep herder. So he says, I want you to get great, good education, which we all did. And uh, so finally, when I was 18 years old, I said, well, how long were you in the she uh, sheep herder, Dad? He said, two weeks. Oh, my God. Midnight Mass was the most, the most important thing during Christmas time. Life centered around the church. This chapel, built in the 1800s, once held the entire congregation of Los Duranes. Seasons of the heart, baptisms, weddings, first communions, funerals, and seasons of the earth were honored here. Holidays such as Christmas and Easter focused on religion and family, and a single, simple gift was a treasure. It was a tradition over here in, uh, well, just like anywhere else, I guess, People would go out asking for Christmas. They would go, be knocking on the door, Miss Christmas, Miss Christmas. We used to go out asking house by house, hey, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. And they used to give us candies, uh, biscochitos, or popcorn, or whatever they, they can, you know what I mean? My folks didn't used to have uh, money to buy us Christmas presents. You know, we never used to get nothing. And what what made uh, us, uh, us, my brothers and sisters, uh, real happy is when my father used to go to the grocery store and we would go crazy when we were eating oranges. You know, we used to, I guess, like we never had, had oranges or nothing like that. And we used to go crazy when we saw oranges. Holy Week was a big week in our lives. Uh, all of us went walking from church to church. The whole town did that was Catholic. And this, is, this is on Holy Thursday. On Holy Thursday. You visited the you churches. You visited the churches. And you walked from here, uh, from where we were, to Old Town, to Immaculate Conception, to Sacred Heart. Um, you even went to the church in Martinez down San Ignacio. San Ignacio. San Ignacio. And you'd meet your friends along the way. Where have you been? And where have you been? Catholic communities have a patron saint who holds special meaning and watches over life. St. Joseph, San Jose, is the intercessor for Los Duranes. San Jose's feast day is celebrated on March 19th. The uh, feast of the saints was a very much of an important part of our lives because the church was so uh, involved in our life. And so they would have a procession and people would have altars at their homes. The procession would start from the church and maybe it would stop at our house and then it, they would go along singing and they'd stop at another church. Fiestas and other important days sometimes include Lomatachines. We had a tradition for many, many years. 
during the war, my mother made a promise that if I came back in a only one piece, that I have to dance. For so I start dancing then. We used to go to the show and we used to get 25 cents for six hamburgers. So we used to split them all, all the guys. And then we used to come. I used to, the show used to be 10 cents in those days. We used to go to the best time. Life was very rich, full of joy as well as work. I used to go fishing right here in the irrigation ditches. When I was watering the rows of green chili and stuff, I used to catch some 11, 12 inch trouts right there in the, in the siempre. When we'd come from, the, from school, we had to go and pick tomatoes and my dad would sell them to grocery stores to Palm Food Market and all of that. So of course, we got a big kick out of throwing each other with the tomatoes. And then, you know, your hands get so green without that tomato that we'd have to get the red, I don't know if it was real ripe tomatoes, and we wash our hands with that, with a real ripe tomato. People gathered just to visit. Early TV was a shared community event. I, I saw TV when I was seven years old over at, uh, at the neighbor house. Her name was Dominica Moniz. She was the only one that had a black and white TV. So all, all, all the neighbors around Duranes area, about 30 or 40 of us, we would get together. She'd take the TV outside and make some popcorn. All of us would sit outside and look at the TV over her house. There were romances, dances, mischief and fun. When I first came here, uh, we used to go to the dance hall in the Old Town Society Hall. And then uh, we had a dance hall here in Duranes. We, they had good music, mostly polkas and waltzes, the jitterbug especially. That was a good jitterbug place to dance the jitterbug. I mean, a lot of people used to love to dance jitterbug then. You know, and flip the girls around the back and make little fancy stuff. And we had the, the car, I, I think he finally sold it. And one time I remember I got into it and I ran all around the house, I couldn't stop it till it ran out of gas. Because <laughs> 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 uh, I was very mischievous. It was love at first sight because uh, I right away tried to find out who she was. I found out about two weeks later who she was, and uh, and then uh, about two and a half months later, in two weeks, I married her, because uh, I found out she was a good cook, and I went to see TV at her house. We didn't have no TV. When I saw her cooking at her house, I said, uh-oh, I better get on the ball and marry this cook, because I can do without Cadillacs, I can do without mansion, but we can't do without the cook. Yeah. We say we were poor, and in a sense, we weren't we weren't poor at all, you know, because we had all the best richness in the world, you know, was respecting people and and, and trying to be a good citizen. But in Spanish, we have a saying, no faltaba nada which means nothing was missing. We wanted for nothing. In Los Duranes, people shared food, love, kids, faith, a deep sense of community. Neighbors looked after each other. We were poor, but we had a big heart for everyone. They, they always shared their vegetables and their whatever they raised in the garden. Some belong to La Sociedad Nuevo Mexicana de Mutua Protección, a fraternal organization that helped in times of need. Uh, we used to have here a society, so, society hall. I used to belong to that society hall. My dad, my brother, right on the corner of Rio Grande and, and Central, right there where that shopping center is, we used to have a society hall there. 
and they used to charge us 50 cents a month. We had to pay due, 50 cents a month, and to go in a dollar. And when you die, they give to the, well, if you was a member, they give to your wife each, a dollar for each member. And there were a lot of members. I remember when my dad died, my mother got $900. Like the land, being a good neighbor is handed down for generations. Cuando hagas tu fortuna, no te olvides de tu cuna. When you make your fortune, don't forget where you came from. Los Duranes have survived floods, droughts, wars, and centuries. Newcomers and longtime residents work together to retain the region's charm. A restored chapel, a new church, a new community center, and a strong neighborhood association seek to recover, preserve, and teach history, to foster respect for old ways and old people. Today, Los Duranes is a blend of ethnicities, cultures, age groups, interests, and ancient and contemporary ways. Tradition and tomorrow harmonize as new memories are added to Recuerdos de los Duranes. You know, and people were so friendly. I mean, they just always smiling. Looked like they were always smiling and singing. And you could see, uh, well, to me when I came here, I thought it was uh, the land where everybody loved each other, liked each other. People are depending more on themselves now than before. We used to share each other with whatever we could, you know. We were poor people, but uh, we used to share our goods, our fruit, our garden, whatever we used to grow, I still do, and uh, that makes me happy to share with somebody else. Uh, whatever I have, I do it with, with my own will, which I think that's a thing that you never forget when you help somebody else or somebody else help you when you need it. It's beautiful, very kind. Amigos y parientes vienen todos a gozar. 